Hello, Christian here with a, another video progress report for the PFSense WireGuard package. I think we're on video number seven, and we have come a long way since the very first progress report video that I uploaded uh, several weeks ago. In this video, I want to briefly talk about uh, two major changes, really awesome changes from the last video, and uh, kind of talk about what those are about and what things are looking like moving forward. So the first thing that I want to talk about is we now have a service that we're actually uh, tracking um, to actually monitor WireGuard, to stop it, to restart it, et cetera. Um, so we now have the ability to um, stop WireGuard and restart it um, right through the normal PFSense uh, service manager. So if we cl click on status here, we can see that we now have an entry for WireGuard and it's currently green. Now you might be wondering how we're doing this because we're using the kernel resident, not the Go implementation. Now the Go implementation did have an, an executable that would run uh, to, handle, uh, to handle all the WireGuard stuff, but because we're using the kernel module, there's not, um, there's not really anything running that we can just look for a process in the process tree. So what we're actually doing is we have a really small um, PHP script that just checks um, every so often if the WireGuard module is loaded. And if it's loaded, then we show a green check. And if it's not, then you'll see, um, you'll see that as being uh, the service being down. So if we just click on here and click on stop, um, it's going to tear down all the WireGuard tunnels and um, it's going to unload the kernel module and now WireGuard is stopped. So if we go back to VPN WireGuard, on every page you'll see a warning that says the, the WireGuard kernel module is not loaded and all of our uh, tunnels and all of our peers are now um, blurred out, or they're, you know, they're grayed out because again, WireGuard's not running. And if we wanna bring up WireGuard again, all we have to do is click on start and it's gonna automatically um, build the tunnels and also it's going to restart a few services. So we're still working out the details on how we're gonna deal with um, restarting services that could depend on WireGuard. For example, things like unbound and dpinger, uh, free range routing. Um, you know, there's a laundry list of, of services that could potentially depend on WireGuard. Um, so we're still kind of thinking about how we're gonna deal with that. Um, but currently right now, uh, when you start the WireGuard service, um, we're also going to uh, restart Dpinger and um, Unbound. So if we go back to the dashboard here, um, you can see that I have, um, I have two WireGuard tunnels uh, as before in the same video. So I've got my remote access TunWG0 and TunWG1, which is my Molvad uh, link. And if I go back to the dashboard here, and um, if I stop WireGuard, you're going to see these two uh, gateways are going to start to lose packets. They're going to go offline. And you can see that we're losing packets there. And eventually we're going to get a warning and then it's going to be marked as down. We'll just let that go to down state. All right, so now we're offline at 25% packet loss. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just start WireGuard back up. And what it's doing is it's uh, it's starting WireGuard. It's also restarting Dpinger because if uh, Dpinger is not restarted, the uh, gateways that you might have will, will sit in a pending state. And it also is restarting um, Unbound. So the second thing that I want to talk about is we now have a proper integration with Unbound. So one of the things that was still uh, left to be implemented from what WireGuard was doing um, or sorry, what, P, what NetGate was doing with WireGuard in 2.5.0 was a proper integration with Unbound. Now, the default, uh, the default configuration of Unbound um, out of the box is Unbound will listen on all network interfaces. However, that doesn't mean that, um, that Unbound will actually respond to queries. Um, it just means that you know, the, query, the, the network interface um, can respond doesn't necessarily mean that it will. Um, so the, the, the second part of that is we have to actually have an ACL, um, an access list. So this was actually completely hidden uh, from you uh, with the 2.5.0 implementation. Um, I can leave a link to the code if you're interested, um, but 
what NetGate was doing was they were collecting all of the, the tunnel networks and they were basically just slapping them on the end of the, of the built-in ACL um, to unbound so that any clients that you might have, if they try to communicate to unbound on a tunnel interface at a tunnel address, unbound would work. So what we're doing is we're doing the same thing. But again, because this is a package, we can only really you know, do what's already available in the user interface. So much like the interface group and the early shell command, we're creating a WireGuard access list and again, this is marked as do not do not edit or delete this. This is automatically managed for you. Um, and if you click on edit here, you can see that we have um, the two the two networks from my remote access tunnel. Now, it, once you assign the interface in PFSense, Unbound is already capable of picking up what those network addresses are. So you don't you won't see those here. So, for example my MULVAD interface, um, I have the network, uh, the network configured through PFSense, so it's assigned, and we're not gonna see um, entries in the WireGuard ACL from that. So once you assign a WireGuard tunnel to a PFSense interface, um, unbound, there's already the logic in PFSense to listen on the correct interface as well as um, producing the correct ACL so that Unbound will actually respond to queries from that particular network. So this is this integration really only applies to um, WireGuard tunnels that are not assigned in PFSense. So just to go, reiterate that, if we go back to VPN WireGuard, um, you can see that the TUN WG0 is not assigned in PFSense. And if we click on edit here, you can see that we have the 10.1.15.1 slash 24 network and we have the FD9A doobly do one slash 64 network. And both of these are what is appearing in the, um, sorry, the DNA uh, unbound access list. So if we go back here and click edit, you can see that we're pulling, we're converting this to uh, the actual network address for both IPv4 and IPv6, applying the correct mask. And then we're also taking the tunnel name and the tunnel description as the description on the ACL. Um, so just to demonstrate how this works, if I go back to WireGuard and let's say I wanted to add an, another tunnel interface for some reason, and we'll just do another V4 address. We'll just say 10.1.15, or sorry, 10.1.25.10 slash 24. So it's a different subnet. So we should expect to see the 10.1.25.0 slash 24 in the ACL. So we'll click save. And we'll go back to services, click on DNS resolver, go to access list, and now we should have three entries in the ACL for unbound. And we do. So the 10.1.25.0 network is, is there. So um, if we go back, let's just you know keep demonstrating this. Let's create another tunnel. And we'll call this test tunnel. And we'll give it a private key. And we'll give it an address. We'll say 10.10.10.10 uh, slash .10 .10 24. Oops. And we'll call this uh, just test and we'll click on save. And again, if we go back to services, DNS resolver, access lists and edit, we see the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 network from Tun WG2, the test tunnel. So that's pretty much it for this update. So I think we're now at a point where we're going to take what we have draw a line in the sand and we're gonna go ahead and submit a PR to NetGate to get this in because this, what we have now is 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 so far improved from what uh, is currently in the 260 uh, package repository. So again, if you wanna download the packages for side loading, you can find those in, in the description. Um, and also as a reminder, um, if you find the package useful, um, you know, this takes my time. I would really appreciate it if you check out my link to GitHub sponsors. Or also, um, I have an email in the description if you would like to donate via PayPal. Um, if that's your thing, that'll work too. So anyway, if you have questions, comments, concerns, please uh, either post on the NetGate forums on Reddit um, or leave a comment in the description. I've been uh, checking all of those things or even shoot me an email um, if you want to go down that route too. So that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching.